Hi, this is Tim Martin, and in this video I want to give you an introduction to mineral lusters. Luster is often defined as the quality of light reflected from the surface of the mineral. Now, when we're talking about the way light is reflected from the surface, I'm not just speaking of color, and I'm also not just speaking of how shiny an object is. It's the quality, the way the light is reflected. Maybe the best we can do is to dive in and take a look at some examples. So, here's a sample of the mineral galena. This has what we describe as a very metallic luster. It looks like a piece of metal. That's why we call it metallic. It's very reflective, almost like a piece of silver. Here's another metallic mineral. This is a piece of the mineral chalcopyrite, and you can see it has a gold-like color. Similar to the chalcopyrite, here are two samples of iron sulfide, or normal pyrite. They too have a yellow metallic luster. Now, don't just think that a mineral could be gold or silver. There's this one. This is the native element copper, and you can see it has a reddish brown or orange metallic luster. This one's very unique. This is a mineral not from planet Earth at all. This is a fragment of a meteorite. And this particular iron-rich meteorite has a very metallic luster. Similar to metallic, we have these over here. This is a sample of the mineral magnetite. And you can see it's somewhat reflective, somewhat like metal, but not nearly as shiny as the other ones, so we'll refer to this as submetallic. Also, this corroded piece of pyrite and this piece of hematite. They're not as shiny, but they have some characteristics that look a little metallic, so we'll refer to these as submetallic. Again, similar to metallic, we can find this. If you call this metallic, I certainly wouldn't argue with it, you, but it also has a bit of a greasy look, and certainly a greasy feel, so this graphite may be described as being greasy or metallic, or both. Now, possibly the most common of the non-metallic lusters is vitreous luster. Here's a piece of glass. Glass is highly reflective, depending on the angle that you hold it. So, there are some minerals that have a glass-like luster. Here's a piece of quartz, and I hope you can see this has a very vitreous or glass-like luster. Similar to the quartz, here's a piece of calcite that also has a vitreous luster. Now, it's important that we're not just talking about how clear, or transparent, or see-through the mineral is. There are certain minerals that have vitreous lusters, such as this feldspar, which is very reflective, but it is not transparent. It's completely opaque. So this feldspar also could be said to have a vitreous luster. Now, like there are subclassifications of metallic lusters, there's also a subclassification of the vitreous luster. Here's a cut gem, and you can see it's very shiny, much more shiny than just the simple glass. If something is really shiny, like a gem, we can refer to it as an adamantine luster. Here are a couple samples of the mineral topaz. This topaz is highly reflective on its surface, and in fact it is a gem, so we can say this has an adamantine or gem-like luster. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum, from the vitreous and adamantine, are samples like this. This is a piece of barite from Oklahoma. You can see it's not shiny at all. We refer to this as having a dull or earthy luster. Here's a piece of malachite, a piece of bauxite, and a piece of kaolinite. All of these are very dull and non-reflective in their surface. Now, between dull and earthy, and vitreous and adamantine, we have several more. So let's take a look at some of these. You may recognize these as pearls. In fact, they are. Pearls come from sea creatures, as does mother of pearl, the lining of certain seashells. I hope you can see that this muscovite has a similar luster to the mother of pearl. So we may describe this as being pearly. Now you may also describe this as being vitreous, and I certainly won't argue with you but we could say it's vitreous and it's pearly. 
Do you recognize this material? If you know anyone who's played a stringed instrument, right away they'll know that this is rosin. This is used to make cello and violin bows more sticky when the instrument is being played. I hope you can see that this sphalerite has a similar luster to the resin, as does this garnet. So we could say these two minerals have a resinous or rosinous luster. How about this? Here's a piece of wax and a candle. Is wax shiny? Well, it's certainly not shiny like glass, and it's certainly not dull, so how about we call wax waxy? In fact, here's a piece of talc and a piece of pyrophyllite. Both of these have a bit of a waxy luster. Finally, here's a sample of the cloth satin. Satin is shiny depending on the angle at which it's held. So, there are certain minerals that have a satin-like luster. In fact, this type of gypsum is known as satin spar. Similar to that, we have this quartz. This particular variety of quartz is known as tiger's eye, and it too has a satin-like luster. So, by way of recapping, whether we're talking metallic, submetallic, or greasy, vitreous adamantine, or dull, pearly, resinous, waxy, or satin-like, we simply find a descriptive adjective to help explain the way light reflects off the surface of the mineral. These terms may be very useful in identifying the mineral later on. Thanks for watching, and I hope you join me again on another mineralogy video.